All right, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give our praise and honor to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shah, by Hashem, Mokakada. I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone for teaching me the truth, 100% securely. And I would like to give a salutation to the Hakim and Aqua who are listening and studying to show ourselves approved. This is Brother Bayon from the Tulsa, Oklahoma. He was the light camp, coming back to you with another quick lesson. And pretty much the title of this lesson. Let me go back to it right here. All right, it's gonna be uh, the birth of the new righteous kingdom, right? And so, ultimately, what inspired me to do this lesson, what I put as you very edified by these brothers' uh, live, you know, this live uh, highways and byways. Okay, I believe it was a, a midweek camp. You know, I think they do it on Wednesday or so on and so forth, and. One of the things they was talking about was <clears throat> Salakia was pretty much like uh, Jacob's trouble, all right? And some things that they said were very inspiring because they compared Jacob's trouble to a woman that's pretty much having a child, you know, and getting ready to give birth at the end of nine months, right? And so, and that's what Jacob's trouble is compared to, all right? And so, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and play what the brother said, and then we're just going to go ahead and get into the scriptures, all right? Low willingness to be edified. Pertaining to the end, and we're out here to tell you that we are in the end, and we're showing you how we're in the end. You know? That's it on that precept. That's right. Uh, 2nd Ezra 16, verse uh, 37. 2nd Ezra 16, verse 37. Behold, the plagues draw nigh, and are not slack. As a as when a woman with child in in the ninth month bringeth forth her, her son, were in two or three hours of her birth, great pains could pass her womb, which uh, pain which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. And look at these events on the earth, these natural disasters. Another word for that are plagues. Natural disasters on the earth are happening rampant right now, all over the place. It seems like every damn day, it's something new that happens to the earth. Right. And he's using an example as a woman in the process of giving birth. Eventually, them contractions lead into a baby coming out. Right. And the closer those contractions, I'm sorry, them uh, contractions, I'm going to say contractions. The closer those contractions get, that's how you know when the baby's going to come. And it's always like every day. It's something new. Every day you look at the news and it's something something more extreme that's happening. Right. Some type of new virus they're talking about. Some type of new hurricane being brewed up in the Atlantic Ocean. All right. And, and that's pretty much what he said that it, it just reminded me of the new kingdom, the new righteous kingdom that's getting ready to come. Before that righteous kingdom come, there's going to be pains and sorrow, okay, compared to a woman giving birth in in her uh you know at the end of her ninth month right and so you know i pretty much got a couple of priests up you know laid out me of everything that their brothers have said right you know and you know lord willing this to be edifying we'll go ahead and read some of them but first i wanted to mention that you know jacob's trouble is going to be like a time you know just like when you read it matter of fact we'll start out with those two priests up you know it's, it's, it's very, it's just kind of the spirit because, you know, you get precepts written down and precepts also come to mind, right? So I might as well reject the trouble, right? Because it's Jeremiah 30 and 7, and it says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, right? And so right here, you, you can see that it says there none is like it, Okay. And so that means after everything that historically happened, it's going to be a time that's going to be worse than all of the things that happened right here on earth. So that means the time of Jacob's trouble is not going to be historically recorded, okay? It's not going to be in a history book. There's not going to be a YouTube video about it, all right? Nobody is going to know about Jacob's trouble. That's how deep this, this scripture is telling you. That's the warning right there. That's what it's telling you. It's going to be a time such that none was it before. Let's read that again. Jeremiah 30 and 7. At last, for that day is great. So none that is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, 
but he shall be saved out of it. And that's the beautiful part about it at the end of it. It said he shall be saved out of it. So the true believers, the, the ones, the doers of the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah are the ones that's going to be saved out of it. But the ones that that's not going to be saved out of it is going to be perished. They're going to perish by the lake of fire. Because even when you read Daniel 12 and 1, okay, it pretty much speaks of the same thing. Daniel 12 and 1, it says, and at that time shall Michael stand up. All right, this time is going to be so great that the archangel Michael is going to have to stand up and, and redeem us and help redeem us from the said time. Because we know the true deliverer, which his name is Yahweh Shah, whom the world is going to call Jesus Christ, is going to be basically deliver us out of that said time that's going to happen. All right, so 12, Daniel 12 and 1 again from the top, and he says, And at that time shall Michael stand up, and the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And we see that? It said, everyone that shall be found written in the book. And those who are found written in the book are those who are true believers. And they, and they pretty much prepare themselves, pretty much, right? And that's why... It's spiritual and it's beautiful because Yahweh Bashim Yahweh compared this trouble to a woman travailing with a child. He compared this trouble to a woman that's having a child. Now, what is a man supposed to do when when he actually plants a seed inside his woman? All right, he actually prepare. So what he does is he normal. What the normal thing he's supposed to do is buy diapers, you know. And that this is speaking from experience, you know. You buy diapers you don't just buy a newborn diapers you're going to buy diapers there for three months and you're going to buy a diaper for you know six to eight months okay and then and then you're going to work your way up to the pull-up right because you get you're preparing for not only for when that child is getting ready to uh be born but you're also parent preparing for the growth of that child okay because we know when a child first born, they spring up, you know, they, they, they grow like wildfire. Right. And so that's the preparation that come with, you know, when, whenever your child is get ready to be born. And so that's the same, that same mindset that you apply to when you're preparing for, you know, your child to be born is the same mindset you got to apply when you come to, uh, you know, Jacob's trouble, when it comes to, the thing basically preparing you to pre preparing yourself for when you how why you how shot come back it's the same thing and hence the reason why i call this this title this title of this lesson the birth of a new righteous kingdom okay and so one of those preparations uh preparing for the birth of a new kingdom if, of course you first must repent all right me and the Akim, tayasarala could dr how we did a a beautiful highways and byways right we were pretty much going into seditions among men in pretty much World War Three, and we talked about that. We we went into that, and the first thing we said is, "Seek ye the Lord while He may be found." That is the first step of your preparation. Okay, you know we're reading scriptures like Romans twelve and two, right? Colossians three and one, I believe, right? What it says: sexual affection on things above and not on things on earth. So. The first step step of your preparation when it comes to the, the birth of this new kingdom is pretty much to, you know, get your mind set off of the things of this world, all right? Taking your, your thoughts out of the things of this world because this world is going to pass away, right? All right, so, you know, that's pretty much, uh, matter of fact, since I read uh, Daniel 12 and 1, you can also read, uh, Revelation 20 and 12, right? Because this is the uh, Apostle John who basically writ vision what he saw after those people who were, uh, you know, pretty much after Jacob's trouble, pretty much, right? This is Revelation 20 and 12, and it says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh Bashim Yahushua, and the books were open, and another book was open, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those light of those things which were written in the book according to their works. And you see, that goes back to whether you repent. Because it said according to their work. All right. 
And so these individuals were being judged according to their work. Okay. And you actually go and um, uh, you know, read second at ad the second address uh to lock. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and get it real quick, okay? Cause it cause it's right here, cause it's beautiful, cause it says according to their work, all right? So lock the bell with me for a minute. You know, these scriptures that just came up came to mind, man. I you know, I got these scriptures that I wanted to read, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and read some of these scriptures as well too, that just just popping up right now. Okay, this is second address, the ninth chapter, right? Let me go pull it up real quick. And we and, and of course we read these uh these very same scriptures on the highways and byways as well too. All right, and so so this is second address. Chapter 9, I'm going to start at verse 9, right? Because it says, And then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my way, and they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. You see? And that's the judgment of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. So when you go back and you read Revelation 20 and 12, and he says, And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and the books were open and another book were, was open which is is the book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the book according to their works okay so we're going back and we finish with second edges 9 and verse 10 and he said for such as in their life have received benefit and have not known me and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty, when as yet place of repentance was open unto them, understood not, but despised it, the same must know it after death by pain. Well, see that? And so this is the, that judgment that's been, you know, these people that uh, refuse to repent, they're being judged according to their work, Okay. And so is the righteous. The people who does repent, they're going to get judged according to their work, okay? They're going to receive a righteous judgment, and the wicked is going to receive a wicked judgment, okay? And so you jump down from there, and you read Revelation 20 and 15, and it says, And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. You see that? That says, same must know about death by pain, all right? And so... You know, this, these are the things that, that we must respect during Jacob's trouble, okay? But going back to the to the original point is that Yahweh, how Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah compared Jacob's trouble to a woman giving birth, okay? And so let's go ahead and read my first uh, piece of precept, which is uh, 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, which is probably my most favorite chapter, right? favorite chapter and favorite book because I always bring this out right first Thessalonians chapter 5 and I'm gonna start at verse 1 and it says but of the time and the season brethren you have no need that I write unto you and it's the same thing in the same analogy of a woman bringing forth a, a child in, at the end of nine nine months okay we have no need that we write unto you so even though just like in the, in the ninth month we know that our child will get ready to come but we, you know, we don't know the exact the day or the time, you know, just like Yahweh Bajim Yahshua said that, right? Because he said we we know not the time, the neither the time or the season, because it's in the power of of Yahweh Bajim Yahshua. You can read that, and I believe it's Act the first chapter in the seventh verse. Okay, so only Yahweh, which is the uh, the heavenly Father's name, pretty much know it, the exact time and the exact date. All we know is the signs of the of the coming. Just like when when we have a, a, a due date for for a woman that that basically the doctor give her a due date for when they when they should expect that child that child to be here. But even though we have that due date, okay, that child can still come two months or a week and a half before the due date. All right, see, and it goes it lines up perfectly with you know we need to know the time or the se uh, or the season, okay. So even though that doctor still give you a due date, 
that doctor really don't know exactly when that time the time of that uh that child is gonna come forth. And it's the same thing for, you know, the the birth of this new kingdom. Okay, we know First Thessalonians chapter five and two, and he said, For yourself know perfectly that the day of the Lord Yahweh Basim Yah shall so cometh as a thief in the night. You see that? And so that and it and it's a same thing right here in this verse, verse two, because he said, The day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. You see? And when you really think about that verse, you're not gonna know when a thief or a robber is gonna try to come in and break into your house. You see that? You're not gonna know that that exact time. OK, but all you know is that you have some good in your home that worth stealing for. You see, that's all you know. So those are the signs, right, that 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 you can pretty much use to prepare for when a robber is get ready to break into your house. So you might do things like get uh get a gun, you know, not only when you get all of the food and stuff like that. Now you need protection to save what save uh on you to basically prevent a thief from breaking in and trying to steal all your hard earned uh you know the things that you work hard for you see it's the same thing and so that's the same thing that we have to do when we're preparing for the new kingdom all right verse three and it said for when they shall say peace and safety okay and they, and this we bring this out all the time because he said for when they shall say peace and safety who is that day that's none other than esau even the so-called white man who would tell you that everything is all right, but really, in reality, all hell is about to break loose, okay? Reading that again from the top, and he said, for when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction come upon them as to veil upon the woman with child, and they shall not escape. And see, and they compare that time, that very same time. So a woman with child could be walking in a grocery store and... You know, she could be excited and she'd be like, the doctor told me I'm going to have my baby in three, in, in the next three days. And all of a sudden her water break, you see? And that and that basically, you know, proved that the doctor is pretty much wrong whenever they give you that due date, all right? Because only your how about some y'all shot know everything, right? He knows the time of the season. Matter of fact, since I keep quoting it, let's go get that real quick. You know, act. Act the first chapter, and it's a, 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 uh, during that time when you, when you're how was shy. So like to bear with me for a minute. All right, so like you about that. And, uh, so well, I was getting ready to read Act the first chapter, and it'll be the the seventh verse, right? Act Act chapter one and verse seven, because really, uh, actually we can start at verse six, okay? Cause, Cause, this is when uh, the disciples saw Yahweh Shah after he uh, died on the cross and he rose back up. Okay, he rose back up alive. All right, uh, Act the first chapter in the sixth verse, and it said, "When they therefore come together, they ask him, all right, saying, Lord Yahweh Shah, would thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel?' And he said unto them, "It is not for you to know the time or the season which." which the father has put in his own power okay and so that's pretty much the same thing is going to happen so all we know when jacob we know that jacob's trouble is going to come but we don't know the exact time or the exact date okay and so and so we're going back and you read uh second edges i mean so like the first uh first thessalonians chapter five and three because it said for when they shall say peace and safety then sudden destruction come upon them as to as upon them as to veil upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. And see that going back to what I just previously said. All right. That, that woman can be walking around in the grocery store and next thing you know, her water broke. And it pretty much be three days before her due date. OK. You know, in my personal experience, they, you know, my my ch my child, my children, they came weeks before their due date. OK. So you will never know that day or time. And so that's the same thing. We we just got to always be prepared. You know, there is a uh, quote that I grew up hearing my dad always say by, uh, you know, a public speaker uh, by the name of Les Brown. You know, his name was Les Brown. And, and one of the things he said was, uh, it's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. Okay. And that's basically, you know, what the mindset you got to have 
when it comes to, you know, expecting y'all about some y'all shot to come back. Okay. We don't know the days or the time, but I'm gonna have my oil ready. I'm gonna have my face oil ready. Okay. So reading on uh verse four and it said, But ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief, right? Because we're always gonna be prepared, all right? Go, going back to that quote that I just said. It's better to be prepared for an opportunity and not have one than to have an opportunity and not be prepared. You see? And so right here in verse 4, because it said, but ye brethren are not in darkness. Why are we not in darkness? Because we're constantly watching. We're constantly being prepared. Okay? We're constantly watching for the sign of thy coming. All right? And that that day should overtake you as a thief. All right? In verse 5, and it says, ye are children of light. And the children of day, we are not of night nor of darkness. You see? <clears throat> and that goes back and they bring me to the very next precept, which is Acts the 14, 14 chapter and verse 20, uh 22. Okay? Because we we expect these times, right? Because we don't believe the plantation Christian pastor that tells you if you're a true believer, you're gonna be raptured out of here. Okay? We 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 stick to the script. We stick to what the scripture says. So this is Acts 14 and 22. And it says, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting and, and it, it them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. When we see that, he said, we must, through much tribulation. Okay, what is tribulation? Okay, those are tough times. Right, those are times they're going to try your faith. All right, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of Yahweh by Tim Yahweh Shah. Okay, so what does that mean? Right, we must prepare, we must get ready, we must have faith in Yahweh by Tim Yahweh Shah. We must always have, have this scripture in mind, which, which I always go through, which is uh, 1 Corinthians 10, and I, I believe it's 13. <clears throat> Well, the Apostle Paul read, right? Yep. First Corinthians 10 and 13, right? Because it said, There have no temptation taken you, but such is common to men. But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh is faithful, who would not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. You see that? And so, so when Apostle Paul was speaking through that, you know, that temptation, he said, through much temp temptation, we shall enter into the kingdom of Yahweh by Tim Yahweh Shah. We're going to have that description in mind to let, because we know that Yahweh by Tim Yahweh Shah is, is not slack concerning his promises. All right. We know that. OK, so we got this scripture in the mind, because even though we're going through this tough time, we're going through the trials and tribulation. We we also know that Yahweh by Tim Yahweh Shah is going to make a way for us to escape. OK, but. We we also know that the lie that's been spread through the world, you know, through this through this wicked world, right? What the pastor telling you that the true believer is not going to go through any tough time, that's a bald faced lie, okay? Because we just read it in Acts the fourteenth chapter, and there's a whole bunch of other verses, all right? So what to lead me to Sirach, aka Ecclesiastica, aka Sirach chapter two, and we start at verse one, and it says, "My son." If thou come to serve the Lord, Yahweh Basim Yahushah, prepare thy soul for temptation. All right? Right there. Prepare thy soul for temptation. It was going back to the, the analogy of what a man is supposed to do when his woman is pregnant with his seed. Okay? He prepare, he prepare his soul for temptation. What he's going to do? He's going to prepare. He's going to buy diapers. He's going to get formulas. Okay? He's going to prepare for when that child it getting ready to, uh, you know, hit a growth spurt, okay? All of those things are preparation, all right? The same thing you must do when when it comes to, you know, the birth of this new kingdom, which is ultimately, first, you got to prepare for the trials and tribulation, okay? First, you got to repent. All of those things you got to do for, you know, for the new, for this new kingdom, all right? Uh, reading on Ecclesiastical, a.k.a. Sirach, chapter 2 and 2, and it says, Set thy heart a right, and constantly endure, and make not haste in a time of trouble. You see, so your mind, so when anytime we hear scriptures about heart, 
it also go to your mind, all right? So your mind got to be right. When, so when this time do come upon you, it says make not haste in the time of trouble. So don't make no drastic decision, okay? In verse 3, and it says cleave unto him. So when you're in that tribulation, you're going to cleave unto your high body, Yahweh okay? And how are you going to cleave unto him? Is by taking heed to the words that are written in his holy Bible, okay? And it says cleave unto him and depart not away that thou mayest be increased in thy last end. So actually, when you read, uh, what is it, Proverbs 3 and 5, what it says, trust in the Lord, your how about me, I shall went with all thy heart, okay? Going back to that word heart, which is your mind. And it says, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path, okay? It says, trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on to thy own understanding, right? In verse 16, it says, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and, and he shall direct thy path. You see that? And so those are the scriptures you keep in mind, and that's how you cleave onto your high box from your shot. Okay, Ecclesiastica, aka Shrock 2 and 5, and 2 and 4, so like it, it said, Whatsoever is bought upon thee, take cheerfully and be patient, where thou change to a lower state. Okay, and there's another scripture lined up perfectly with this because, uh, was it uh, Hebrews 2 and 7, somewhere around there when it says, uh, The Lord, whom the Lord loveth, he chastened him. Okay. And so that's something to be cheerful about because if he putting you through the trials and tribulations, that means you how about some y'all shall love you, okay? So take cheerfully and be patient when thou art changed to a lower state, okay? Verse 5, Ecclesiastes, a.k.a. Shirat, chapter 2 and 5, and it said, For gold is tried in the fire, an acceptable man, and a furnace of adversity. And see, that's how you know. When they when they talk about that fire, which is twofold, it, it's literally the lake of fire, which is going to be bought, bought by the uh, thermonuclear missile, and it's also going to be the fire, which is compared to adversity, the trials and tribulation. Okay, all right. So, and uh, and and the brothers in that vet, in that lesson that the uh, highways and byways, they were reading from uh, Second Edges, the sixteenth chapter. So I'll read, I'll go ahead and read the second edges chapter 16, and I'm going to start at verse 35, okay? And it says, Hear now these things, and understand them, ye servants of the Lord, you have by some you shot. You see? And basically take heed to the word. Behold, the word of the Lord, you have by some you shot. Receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. And it says, Believe not the gods whom the Lord spake. Going back to what I was recently saying, any plantation Christian pastor will tell you that the true believers is not going to go through the trials and tribulation that's going to happen here on earth. They're going to be raptured out of here. Those are the gods whom the, whom the Lord Yahweh about me out shall speak. And they also saying things like Jacob trouble have already passed. And remember, we just read Jeremiah 3, uh, 30 and 7 and, uh, you know, Daniel 12 and 1 because it says such as the time never was before. Okay. And so, again, that means that there's going to be a time, the time of Jacob's trouble is going to be a time that have not been recorded and, and basically historical, it have not been historically recorded, okay? And so how can they know that it's already passed when this time it have not been recorded? Nobody know of this time. There's no video speaking of, of this time. There's no no record, okay? And so going back and you read 2nd second, second Edges 16 and 36, it said, Behold, the word of the Lord receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Behold, the plague draw nigh and are not slack. As when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son, with two or three hours of her birth, great pain compass her womb, which pain, which pains when the child cometh forth, they slack not a moment. Okay, and that's that compared again. Yeah, how about you, Yahweh Shah compared it to the time of Jacob's trouble to a woman when she's giving birth to her child, okay? That pain, the great sorrow, the cries, okay, the tears, okay? Everything that comes with that, those contractions, all right? Verse 39, and it says, Even so shall not the pledge be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. You see, verse 40. O oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to thy battle. That goes back to their preparation. And in those evil, be as even be 
in those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. He that sell it, let him be as he that fleeth away, and he that buyeth as one that will lose. You see that? He that sell it, let him be as he that fleeth away. And this is going back into what Lot had to do. All of his riches, all his possessions, he had to leave it behind. Okay? And it's the same mindset you must be in. Okay? Verse 42. And I, I'm going to say this. Remember Lot's wife. All right? He that occupied it, merchandise as he that hath no profit by it, and he that built it as he as as he that shall not dwell therein, he that soweth as if he should not reap, so also he that planted the vineyard as as he that shall not gather the grape. They that marry as they that shall get no children, and they that marry not as the widows. See? And so those see it's perfectly how it's written out is basically what what these scriptures is telling you, no matter what your what your uh situation is, you know, as you read in the Philippians, the second chapter where it said, work out your own salvation, because everybody's situation is gonna be different. Okay. And so when these all of these situations that that's broken down in uh second second edges, he's telling you whatever your situation is. Drop everything and cleave on to your how about you, Yahweh Shah. Okay? And so when these times come, all right, just like, just like when Yahweh Shah said, uh, I, it's, I can't remember the exact verse in the chapter, but but he specifically said, he that seek to save his life shall lose it, and he that loses his life for my sake shall gain his life. All right? Loosely paraphrasing. You see? And that's pretty much talking about your lifestyle right here on earth. Okay? So if you're seeking to save all of your possessions, you shall lose it, all right? But if you are willing to leave all your possessions uh, behind and cleave on to your house and your shot, you will get you will gain it. You will get it back tenfold. Okay, read the stories of Job, all right, and all the other prophets. As a matter of fact, with you know, since I said that, it bring me to uh, Sirach chapter two, and and we'll read verse ten, all right. Because it says, look at the generation of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? And see, he's asking you the question, and no one, right? Even from Daniel's in the lion's den, the three holy children, and so on and so forth, all right? So you have those type of faith that the old prophets, the generations of old have, then your how about me outside is not going, going to forsake you, okay? And so last not least, we're going to read, so after all of those death, all of those pains, you know, the bloodshed, Darren Jacob's trouble, we pretty much be entered into that new kingdom, which is leading me off with Isaiah, the second chapter, okay? And it says, the word of Isaiah, the son of Amos, saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem, and it shall come to pass in the last day, the mountain of the Lord, Yahabashim Yahushua house, shall be established in the top of the mountain. And it's talking about this new kingdom right here. This is what you're going to be expect. This is this is pretty much the new covenant that's going to be established, right? And it says, and it shall be exalted above, above the hills, and all nations shall flow unto it. You see that? And this is how you know those people that are over there in Jerusalem now are not the new people because nobody... It's flowing to them. As a matter of fact, they're making war with those people, okay? Which is further proof that they are not the people. All right, verse 3. And it says, And many shall go and say, Come ye, and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, Yahabashim Yahshua, to the house of the power of Jacob, and he will teach us his ways, right? And he will teach us his ways. That means that the new covenant right there, the laws are going to be written in our inward part, Okay? And and we will walk in his path, for out of Zion shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord Yahweh Bashim Yahshua from Jerusalem. And he shall judge among the nation and shall rebuke many people, and they shall beat their swords with plowshares and their spears into pruning hook. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation. Need to shall they learn a war anymore? You see that, and that's pretty much that peace, right? 
And that's pretty much the end of that birth. That's going to be that, that new kingdom, okay? That new righteous kingdom is going to be at peace. And that's going to pretty much be that same feeling after when, after all of that pain and sorrow, when that woman pushed that baby out, now it's all love, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, it's still tears, but it's more like happy tears, right? Because we're, we're, we're looking at that new child, right? And that's the same thing, what it's going to be like, somewhat similar to what it's going to be like, you know, because, you know, Yahabashi Miyashah also said, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, your ways. So even though I'm, you know, bring it up how i'm envisioning what the new kingdom is going to be like it's going to be far beyond what i'm thinking right and so and so forth and you also you know who, who also come across and listen to this lesson all right and so that's pretty much what you expect after all of those pains and sorrows right with the birth of that new kingdom okay so low willingness was edifying and with that we give our praise and honor to yahweh bahashem yahweh shah bahashem makakadash I want to give double honor to the apostles and elders of the Great Millstone for teaching me the truth, 100% securely. Shalom, DTA, Ababa Ba, Kwame Yashuala.